Well, hello there. Welcome to our Thursday edition of the Acrylic Pouring Extravaganza. Uh, we are on day number four of our uh, Whirlwind membership experience. And today is all about uh, what a member's Q&A would look like inside our membership. We do this every month and uh, people or members can submit their questions ahead of time if they wish, uh, or they can show up live and ask questions if they have them. Uh, so there's multiple ways you can you know, ask your questions, but it's all about helping you solve any problems or uh, any tips or tricks or anything you want to know. Um, this is the time where I can help you specifically with any questions you might have. And uh, people have submitted some questions earlier here for me to answer. So we'll take a look at those and I'll also answer any questions that you might have um, uh, and I'll answer those live. So welcome everyone. Uh, we have got uh, a familiar group right here, which is awesome. Sharon is here. Hey, Sharon and JC. Linda is here um, and Susan is here. That's fantastic. Welcome everybody. And uh, JC is asking, why do you come on already talking? Maybe there's a little delay because uh, I should maybe hold off a minute, <laughs> but uh, it, it shows me that I'm going live. So I assume you're seeing what I'm seeing, um, but perhaps there's a little bit of a delay. So in the future, maybe I'll wait a little bit. I'll let you just get a good look and then, then I'll jump right into it. So, <laughs> hey, Donna, nice to see you. So if you have any questions, um, uh, feel free to throw them in the comments. I'm sure more people will be joining us as we progress here. Um, so let's see here. Um, and I'm just checking, there's nothing coming in yet. Just a lot of uh, hellos and things like that, which is awesome. Hey, Monique, gra I'm glad you could join us. Um, so anyway, we're closing down on uh, the membership closing, uh, our closing time. Uh, and uh, so if you're thinking about joining the membership, time is limited. We only have a couple more days and then the membership period will be closed uh, and you'll have to wait until I open the membership next time. Um, but now is really the time if you're thinking about it or at all curious about what we do inside the membership, just because uh, right now you can get some fantastic bonuses um, that I will never offer again. So it is a, a really a once in a lifetime offer at the moment. And uh, I'm going to throw the link in the chat before we go. And I'll probably put that in there again as uh, uh, towards the end of our Q&A session. But um, so but this week we're doing a condensed shortened view of what we do in the membership every single month. And uh, we, 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 we meet once a week and have a, a members um, a members only live stream. And in that live stream, I do demos, I do technique walkthroughs, I do studio chats, which we had yesterday, sharing a, a wide variety of different topics. I do the members only Q&A, which is what we're doing right now, today. And then um, we also do a uh, art show every month, which is really, really fun. And uh, so you can submit your paintings that you've worked on during the month and uh, we take a look at them and it's a really fun way to see what other members are doing and working on. And then I give away some prizes. So that's a very fun uh, little event that we do every single month. And I also am going to be doing a Friday demo uh, every week. And that's going to be a members only Friday demo. Uh, in the past, it was open to everyone uh, who wanted to join, could drop by and check out uh, the demo. But from now on, it's only going to be uh, for members only. So we'll be doing that. So we're actually going to be meeting twice a week every single week. And uh, of course, I'm focusing a lot on courses now. So I'll be rolling out new courses on maybe a monthly or um, every month and a half, two month basis, depending on the complexity of the course. Um, and you'll get access to all of that. There are two courses waiting for you right now inside the membership. Uh, one is a kind of a beginner course on if you're brand new to paint pouring, uh, an easy way to get started um, using very inexpensive supplies and paints and things. And then uh, I have a more, um, um, I have a bigger course that really covers my entire process of paint pouring. 
um, from beginning to end, I show you exactly what I like to do, how I mix my paints, um, the formulas I like to use. Uh, I cover three of the core acrylic pouring techniques, um, and I walk you through all three of those. So it's a pretty extensive course, um, but it's also designed more for the beginner or intermediate, uh, depending on your level. So all levels are really welcome and uh, uh, it will be very, very beneficial to you. There's also a Facebook group, which you might go take a look at, uh, just a brief peek inside our uh, members only Facebook group um, today. And so you could join that if you wish. Um, so, all right, so I'm going to just see, and welcome everyone else has joined us while I've been talking. So um, great to see you all here. Thanks for uh, dropping by and checking out our uh, Q and A. And let's see here. Um, hi, Julia is here. Welcome. And Pat has joined us. Christy is here. Fantastic. And uh, let's see here. Christy's already got a question. So let me th throw that up there. Um, what is the best way to finish off the back of a canvas? Uh, well, there's a couple different ways. There's no best way. There's multiple ways. Um, before you even get started with your painting, what I like to do is tape off the back of my canvas. Uh, it prevents it from getting full of paint or uh, fingerprints and things like that. Um, but you could also uh, cover the back with uh, paper or I like to use a thin like poster board type of a board and then cut out some, some slots. If it's a canvas, you wanna let a little air flow through the canvas. So you don't wanna seal it off completely. Uh, just put some little triangular openings in there, and that will let the uh, canvas kind of breathe a little bit. Um, but that's a nice, clean look. There's also a way I'll show you inside the membership. Um, it's not ready yet, but it is a very simple frame you could build for the back of your canvas, and it will replicate kind of what I do with my panels, and it, you'll get like kind of a floating effect, and they'll be kind of floating off of the wall. Um, you could also frame them if you wanted to. Uh, a very simple a floating frame is a, a very elegant way to finish off your paintings. Uh, the two paintings right behind me, the two blue ones right here, both have very simple black wooden floating frames. Um, and uh, it, it's a very elegant, uh, very sophisticated way to finish off your painting. Um, but those are a few ways, there are a couple others, but uh, so there's no perfect way or a right way, it's just the way that works best for you. But that's a great question. And let's see here. So one down. All right, let me um, let me see if there's anything else here quick before I go to some of the submitted questions. And JC is asking, how many paintings are we allowed to post? You can post as many paintings as you like. Uh, I'm only going to enter you once, though, in the drawing. Uh, that's only fair. So everyone gets uh, one entry, but you can feel free to submit as many as you want. And uh, we spin the big wheel, and you'll get some prizes. Um, and uh, so it's a lot of fun. So, and it's random, you know, it's a, it's a random drawing. Uh, there's no pressure at all. You know, you're not gonna get, get critiqued on your paintings or anything um, like that. So it's not like a popularity contest or anything. It's just a, a random spinning of the wheel. So it's just a fun way to kind of gently encourage you to um, uh, do some paintings and share them with the members, things like that. So, all right, great question. All right, and let's see here. And everyone's talking about where they're from, which is nice. That's awesome. And uh, let's see here. And so, cool. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of the submitted questions. I'm not sure if those member or those um, viewers are here right now, but um, they'll probably watch the replay. I'm assuming. So let me go over to the to these comments here. I just typed them up quick. And uh, Irma had a question, and it was, does indoor and outdoor humidity affect drying time? And uh, yes, it does. Uh, the humidity of the air, uh, mostly inside, wherever your painting's drying, that's what affects uh, the drying time. So um, these are water-based paints we're using. They dry mostly through um, evaporation. And so if there's a lot of moisture in the air, they're gonna dry slower um, than if, then they would, if it was like very warm and very dry, I'm in San Diego. So it's usually pretty dry and, uh, and often warm, very warm here. So my paintings tend to dry really quick. 
But if you're in a, a wetter environment, a cooler environment, your paintings will dry slower. Um, there's no big deal with that. It's not going to hurt anything. It just takes a little longer for them to dry. Um, you could put like a, if you wanted to protect them, you know, while they're drying, you could put like a netting type of a box over the top. You want to let airflow through there though. Um, so, cause you don't want to cut off the, the, the air. Otherwise they'll take forever to dry. So, um, they make these little tent things you can buy for like picnics and things. Those are great to set on top, uh, to, uh, eliminate dust and hair and things from falling on top of your paintings. Um, but, uh, so they will dry slower, but it's really nothing to worry about. So, um, that's a great question. And, uh, and Kim is asking, Kim had a question and she said, how long is the membership open to join? And I just mentioned that, but, uh, the closing time for the membership, uh, is Saturday at 9 PM Pacific time, which is midnight Eastern time. So we have uh, all day today, we have tomorrow, Friday, and then all day Saturday, and then the membership will be closed. So three days left to uh, join the membership if you're interested in it. And uh, and then, so I'm going to go back here and check if there are any new questions. And um, so let's see here. And uh, Nancy's got a great question, and she asked, can I do a pour on Yupo paper? And yes, absolutely. I love working on Yupo paper. It's a wonderful surface. Uh, if you don't know what Yupo paper is, it's a synthetic paper. It's kind of like a, a plastic paper. It's made out of polystyrene. Uh, it, it doesn't absorb any liquids at all. Um, it's it's, uh, it's used a lot for acrylic inks, or I mean, alcohol ink pouring, um, and watercolors, especially. I've used it. I started using it with watercolors a while back. It, uh, it's a very different effect using watercolors on Yupo. It's a wonderful surface, um, but it, it works great for acrylic pouring. And uh, I like to just put it on something, mount it on a board. Uh, you could mount it on, you could actually mount it on a canvas board if you wanted to. Like if you bought a larger canvas board, because they're pretty affordable, just leave the wrapping on, just tape the Yupo down, then you've got a nice surface you can use to tilt your Yupo because it is a paper. So it is kind of uh, very flexible and floppy. So you want to put it on something, but it works really, really well. And I love it because it has no canvas texture. You get this very smooth, uh, beautiful um, finish when the paint's dry. So yeah, I love pouring on Yupo. It's a great surface. So great question. And uh, let's see here. And Nancy is asking, uh, can I do a pour on rolled canvas? Um, yes, similar to the Yupo, I would, uh, you want to mount it on something. So, you know, tape it down, or if you have a, a like a wooden drawing board or something, you could staple it down actually. Um, but you want something rigid um, when you're doing your tilting process. Now, there's many ways of doing fluid art, um, but the techniques I'm, you know, typically, we typically do we're working on a, a, a taut or tight or flat canvas or surface uh, and doing our tilting. Um, many fluid artists work right on a, a, a canvas, um, just a big canvas sheet on the floor and they pick it up in parts and turn it. That's a completely different type of technique um, and techniques for using that, uh, like a loose canvas um, sheet. But if you wanted to do things like ring pours, flip cups, uh, you'd want to put it on some kind of a rigid surface and uh, then you can always stretch it afterwards after it's completely dry. Um, but uh, yeah, you could work on rolled canvas, sure. Um, I'd, I'd make sure you get a primed rolled canvas. Uh, you don't want to work on a raw um, canvas. You need it to be primed um, to get the best results. And that's another, you know, of course, there's always exceptions to the rule because other people work on raw canvas too. But uh, it, you're going to get a very different result than if you work on a, a primed canvas. All right. So great question. And uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. So no other questions at the moment. I'm going to uh, flip over and uh, answer another pre-submitted question. 
And this one came from Jess. This is a very common question. And I, I get this question a lot. I see this question a lot. And, um, and, the, and the question is, I can't seem to get cells. I've tried Floetrol, glue, silicone. What am I doing wrong? And uh, it's a very common question. Um, it's hard to say what you're doing wrong. Uh, I need more information to answer that. But some of the common problems with um, not getting cells uh, are often uh, related to a couple of these issues. First of all, your mixing formula could be off. You might be using too much paint, not enough Floetrol, uh, an inconsistent mix with all your different colors. The consistency of your paint is a big one. Uh, if your paint is too thick or too thin, that can, um, that can result in no cells. If all your paint colors you're using in one painting are not the same consistency, that can be a big re reason why as well you're not getting cells. You could be using too little paint on your canvas. You could be using too much paint on your canvas. There's a whole wide range of reasons uh, why you might not be getting cells. Um, but that's the whole thing we cover inside our membership is uh, how to get the best results possible as quickly as possible and uh, using a proven system that I've designed and many of my members have tested and it works. Um, and uh, your results will um, be much more favorable. Uh, you won't have all this guesswork. You won't be um, you know, trying to piece together all this information from all these various videos or Facebook groups or you know, what have you. Um, you'll have a, just a proven system, a very simple system to follow. And uh, you just you know, work with that system, uh, mix up your paints like the way I show you. Uh, use the amount of paint I show you for whatever size canvas you're working with. And I think um, you'll be incredibly pleased with the results. It's really not difficult, but it's all in the details. Um, and uh, the details are the biggest part. So it's not just, oh, I need to put silicone in my paints. Well, it depends on um, the results you want to get, the effects you want to get, how much silicone are you, are you using, what kind of pouring medium. Um, every little detail uh, makes a difference. So um, I lay out exactly what to do in um, especially my art, my fluid art foundations course walks you through uh, everything from beginning to end, exactly how to go about picking your colors, mixing your paints, the proper consistency, um, how much paint to use, how to layer your cup, how to apply the paint onto your canvas, how to tilt it around. Um, step by step, everything is all there for you. And uh, not to say that you're going to get instant, immediate, perfect results, because it does take some practice. Um, you know, it will take a little bit of time just to get used to the system. You know, you might have to mix your paints up a couple of, couple times to get the right consistency. You know, everything takes a little bit of practice. Um, you know, all these things are very simple. It doesn't mean they're really easy to do, though. So uh, hopefully that helps. I know that's a very, you know, uh, you know frustrating answer because... Um, there's no one specific thing. It's, it's a combination of multiple little tiny small things. So, all right. So that is, uh, was, let's see, that was Tina or Jess, I'm sorry. And uh, let's see here. And then I'll go into another one right away. If Tina had a question. Uh, if I join uh, the membership, I think she means, and don't like it, can I easily cancel? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, you can cancel anytime you want. You just go into your uh, account, into your billing section, two clicks of your mouse or taps of your finger, and you'll have canceled your account. It's um, very, very simple. So, and you're in complete control the whole time. You don't have to ask me, send me any, any emails. Um, it's all in your control. So hopefully that helps. And... Uh, All right, let's see here. And uh, Irma is asking, um, Irma's here live with us. Do you put different amounts of silicone, a a AKA hair serum for different thicknesses during uh, different techniques? No, I don't really do that. Um, I don't use the silicone or the hair serum very often, pretty much only in the demo I sh showed you last week. Uh, 
using my glue-based uh, formula. Um, I really like this, the way the cells look with the glue-based medium. Um, I don't really, I don't like it. I don't like to use it with Floetrol-based um, uh, uh, formulas uh, when I mix my paints. So it's really only with the glue. Um, I really like the way the Floetrol uh, cells look all by themselves. The just paint Floetrol and a little bit of water create amazing cells, beautiful cells. Um, and you don't need the silicone at all for that. Um, but I do like to use it with that one specific technique in the glue-based pouring medium. But um, I wouldn't use uh, too much though. Uh, uh, less is more when it comes to using the silicone or the hair ser uh, serum. Just a few drops is all you really need. So, um, but I hope that answers your question. So good question though. And uh, let's see here. And Linda has got a question. Uh, Linda is asking, Brad, I did a canvas in vase pour with analogous colors, but I forgot to torch my canvas and have air bubbles now. Is there anything I can do uh, or just deal with it? Well, if it's, if it's dry, um, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, you could, you know, if they have not popped, you know, I guess you could try, try going in there and popping them. But if, if it's dry, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, but um, I wouldn't worry about it too much unless it's like completely ruined with air bubbles. But I doubt that's the case. Um, and now on the vase, that's a little different story. Um, I don't really work on vases and things. Uh, like that. I mostly just work on the 2D surfaces, but, um, but uh, I mean, you could just, I would look at it as a learning experience. Um, we all make mistakes. We're all going to have um, pores that don't go, you know, perfectly or the way we want. So, um, but don't let that discourage you. You know, it's just another painting. So uh, just move on to the next one and uh, learn from it and uh, just take it as a, as a, like a learning experience. So, um, and that happens to me all the time. I'm a, I do things all the time where it's like, you know what? I should have done this a different way or I forgot to do this. So, um, but uh, yeah, so hopefully uh, I don't think there's any way to like fix that. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to picture what, you know, the air bubbles would look like. But, um, but I would just say move on and, and just do another one. You could always pour over that, you know, painting if you wanted to, if you're unhappy with it um, down the road. So hope that helps. Okay, let's see here. And then Carla um, has got a great idea, a great suggestion. If it's those little white dots that you could sometimes get if you have like a white base coat and you get these little white dots as air bubbles, um, you could fill them in with an acrylic marker that's a great idea. Like if that, um, if that's kind of the the look you have with those air bubbles, you could go in and fill them in with um, like some paint, just on a very tiny brush. You could paint them, or um, a marker, like Carla suggested. So, um, yeah, there's like little ways you could deal with things like that. So great, great suggestion, Carla. Thank you. And uh, and. <laughs> See here. Um, all right, so I don't have any any questions coming in at the moment. Let's go to another uh, pre-submitted question that I got, and uh, let's see here. Um, this is a little bit similar to the last question, but this is from Julia, and she asked, "I haven't started yet." but I wanted to, or I want to, how long will it take to get good results? And again, that's a, it's a hard question to answer um, because there's a lot of factors that go into it. First of all, it's like, how often are you, are you going to paint? Um, but what I can tell you is um, it will take a little bit of time, you know, to, to just go through the course. I'd suggest if you're brand new, go through either the foolproof pouring mini course or my Fluid Art Foundations course. Uh, go through the course, maybe watch the first section on you know, supplies, 
Maybe they're gonna go pick up your supplies that you need. Uh, then go watch the next section that's all about setting up your studio and then get that pouring space, that pouring, your pouring station set up. Then watch the um, section on the paint mixing system. And I might go through half of that and then go back and then follow along with me and just start mixing your paints, follow the formula. Um, and that might take, you know, a couple times to get comfortable just mixing the paints up because um, this is all brand new to you. So don't expect to, you know, instantly master it. Um, it's not going to be take you, you know, months or years, but, um, you know, have, have some expectations that it will take a little bit of time to get up to speed. Uh, just using materials, just mixing your paints, then uh, follow along with uh, my technique walkthroughs. Try a painting out, you know. Um, and I'm just going to say it might take you, you know, six to 12 paintings uh, just to get used to the process, get used to uh, mixing your paints, layering your cup, pouring it on the canvas or flipping your cup, tilting it around. Um, you know, it's going to take a little bit of practice. It's not going to be, you know, you do the first one, it's perfect. Um, it could be, you know, and I'm going to, I might show you an example um, that I'm very proud of. So in a minute, but it could be a, a great painting right out of the gate. And that would be wonderful. Um, and, but I know you'll get there much, much quicker, uh, much, much easier and with a far less frustration. And, um, um, and uh, if you follow along with a proven system, it doesn't necessarily have to be my system, but if you follow along with a proven system or um, a system that takes you from point A to point Z, you know, um, you're going to get there a whole lot quicker. So um, that's what I would, I would suggest. Now, if you're just trying to piece things together from a, a million different videos um, and do it all on your own, it's going to take you much longer. I think um, I'm, I'm pretty confident with that, but, um, but it doesn't have to take you very long. So, but I would, you know, say it's going to take you a couple paintings before you get used to just doing the process, you know, so, um, but I hope that helps. I hope that helps, uh, Julia. And um, let's see here. And then Pam has a question that she submitted. Do I have to use Facebook? I'm not really into social media. And uh, no, you absolutely do not need to use Facebook. Um, we have a Facebook group. Uh, it's a private members only Facebook group, but that's uh, just so members can kind of get together. They can interact. They can share their paintings with each other. They can ask me questions. I'm in that group uh, quite often, um, but you don't have to use it. All the content is uh, housed in my website, acrylicpouringacademy.com. And uh, so you can go to that website. It's got a members area. It's got a course section. So everything is in there. So you can watch everything from um, that website on your mobile phone, on your tablet, on your uh, computer. I mean, if you've got your computer hooked up to your TV, you can even watch it on your TV if you wish. Um, so, but you de definitely don't have to use Facebook. Um, we do meet on YouTube though, uh, every week. So, and that's for the live streams. Um, so we get, we meet live every week or twice a week now. Um, but, uh, if you don't want to even join us on YouTube, you could always watch the replays back in the, uh, membership. So that's a great question though. Hope that helps. I'm going to flip back over here, see if there's any other, uh, questions. And, uh. <clears throat> and let's see here. Uh, I'm just checking for questions here. Chris is asking, and Chris is one of my members. She said, morning, Brad. Are we still doing monthly pours in the members group? I'm getting lost with what's happening watching the extravaganza, um, which is informative. You're a great patient teacher. Yes. Yes, Chris, we are still doing our monthly members uh, techniques. We're starting it up again uh, next week. And uh, spoiler alert, it's going to be uh, the string pull slash chain pull. Um, yeah, the extravaganza has kind of gone on here for two weeks, but we've still done our members only uh, content. We met last night for our members only Q&A. Uh, the week before we had our studio chat, I believe. So yeah, we're still doing all our member stuff. So, uh, and it's going to be the regular time again. 
uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time, so on Wednesdays. And that's our, the day we meet is Wednesdays at 4, 4 Pacific, 7 uh, Eastern. And Chris is in Australia, so I don't even know what time it is over there. I think it's in the morning, though, probably the next day. So, yes, so next week we're going to get back into our members-only content and uh, working on the string pull slash chain pull. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. So, uh, great, great comment, though. Thanks, Chris. And uh, let's see here. And uh, Diane is saying we are lost. What's wrong? Oh, my gosh. I hope you're not lost. And, uh, oh, Donna is saying, okay, maybe this it's happening in the chat, something. Uh, Brad, is is there still a live pour for non-members? Um, there will be this week, come Friday, uh, which is the end of our extravaganza. But after that, no, uh, all of the live pours on Fridays will be members only. And um, I'll still be doing videos on YouTube. Um, and I'm going to be doing more of those. They'll probably be, uh, I'll be more on camera in those videos, but those will be more traditional, just kind of a technique walkthrough or, or, or a pouring video. Um, but the live ones are gonna be um, only members. So so yeah, I'm changing that up. So just so, because um, I get so many questions in the, in the live videos, uh, and a lot of them are from the members, and I wanna be able to answer, you know, the members' questions a little more uh, freely, because I don't wanna share too much with, with the non-members, you know, that's, because uh, your members, you're um, paying for that privilege. So um, that's an, an extra added benefit to being a member of the Pouring Studio. And, uh, and Rebecca is saying, uh, what is the schedule for members? Not just, <laughs> not just screaming, no problem. Um, well, the, it's, I send out an email every single Monday uh, to all the members. And, uh, but what we're doing is we meet every single Wednesday at 4 p.m. Um, or 7 p.m., you know, Pacific Eastern time. And then every Wednesday we go through kind of what we're doing this week. So the first week of the month, we do our technique walkthrough, which uh, next week will be the string pull walkthrough. Uh, the following week I do the, the painting night live. So I'll do um, multiple demos showing you kind of different ways of doing a string pull or a chain pull. Um, so you have, uh, uh, you know, different type, you know, kind of different styles within that one style. Um, so you can try a bunch of different things out. Then the week after that, it's the third week of the month, we have our studio chat, which could be a variety of different topics. Um, the fourth week, we have our members only Q&A. And then kind of the fifth week, which is usually um, kind of, you know, goes into the next following month is our uh, art show. And that kind of changes uh, depending on just the timing and things. Um, but the art show is, you know, kind of a, it's a fun just get together and, and we give away surprises and stuff. So that's kind of the overview of the membership. And then every single Friday though, uh, I'll have another paint pouring demo. It might be related to our monthly technique. Um, uh, it might not. I like to kind of mix things up and do some more experimental stuff on Friday demos sometimes. But uh, so those are the, our meeting times. And so we're always meeting on either Wednesday and Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, and then it's all in the uh, membership as well. If you go to the content calendar, um, you'll, you'll see a little calendar there that has like all of the meeting times that we're meeting up. And uh, it also has all the links and everything in the content calendar section. and. Um, so that is the time. Plus, there's always going to be uh, an email I send out uh, that has all the links as well to join. And then if you wanted to go through the courses, well, those are really designed to go through at your own pace whenever you want to. Those are all housed in the membership. Um, there's a little tutorial on how to find them. But you can just go through those at your, at your own pace whenever you want to. There's no set schedule for the courses. So that's the nice thing about them. You can go through them quickly or take your time uh, or go through them multiple times. Um, it all depends on, on what you want to do, your schedule, and how you want to paint and everything. So, so great question, Rebe uh, Rebecca. I'm glad. I hope that helped a lot. And, uh, 
And uh, Chris is, as, oh, Chris is just saying it's uh, 8.30 a.m. Oh, my gosh, on the 29th. So it's early over there in Australia when we're doing our live demos over here. And, um, and Carla is asking, uh, can you give us a supply list for next week? I don't have any string. <laughs> okay, sure, no problem. Um, yeah, it's very simple supplies, just your paints, a little bit of string, um, or the little chain if you want. I'd, st I'd start with the string. It's a whole lot uh, less expensive. Um, and I actually really like the way the string looks. Um, but I'll show you both. So I'll, I'll provide a list. And I've actually got some string um, right here. I think it's, um, this is the string I like to use. You can get this. Um, we're getting into members only stuff here. But this is a, you can get this at your um, just grocery store. You use this type of string for um, poultry, for wrapping up meat or poultry or things like that. Um, it's just a, a cotton string. Uh, comes on a big spool. It's not that expensive. You can find this at uh, Home Depot also, something similar. Um, so any kind of string like this works really, really well. So that's what we'll be using. And then it's just the regular stuff, uh, paints and canvases and things like that. I have a couple extra tools, uh, like custom-made little tools. I'll show you how to make those, but they're all very simple. And I'm sure you have them laying around the house. So... All right, and then I'll show you where to, where to get the chain as well. Um, you can get that on Amazon. I'll put that in my Amazon store if you want to go check it out. Um, you can get it at Hobby Lobby. Joanne's Fabrics has it. Um, there, there's a lot of places. All right, cool. So let's see here. And um, OK, so I'm just checking for questions. Um, and I don't see any at the, at the moment. So let me go back to a, a pre-submitted uh, question, um, that came in. Uh, I think this might be the last one I typed up and I kind of covered this a little bit also, but Tina is also asking, uh, is the membership for beginners or do we have to be more advanced? And that's a great question, um, but the membership is for beginners, so you don't have to have any experience whatsoever, or you could be more advanced. I think you'll get a lot out of it either way. If you're brand new, I start at the very beginning um, and walk you through exactly what you need. It's not a lot, um, and I, I try to keep things as simple and easy as possible using um, kind of, I don't want to say cheap, supplies, but inexpensive supplies. You don't need to get the really expensive professional grade pouring mediums and golden paints and all this stuff that's great. But uh, when you're first starting, you don't need it. It's not necessary. I'd like to stick with um, much simpler, more affordable supplies to begin with. And then we work our way up into those more expensive things as we progress with our skill level. Um, and uh, you know, technique level and all that stuff. So it's for beginners, it's great for beginners, it's great for intermediate uh, levels as well. If you're really advanced, um, I think you get a lot out of it, but uh, you might not uh, need it, you know? You might not need it if you're selling your paintings and you um, have your own style and your signature style and everything. Um, I'm sure you get a lot out of it, but um, it's not really geared towards uh, the professional, you know, paint pour at this stage. So, um, but that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that one. Hope that's helpful. Let me flip back here. And uh, see here. And JC is saying, um, does the string give the indents like the chain does? The string is a little more subtle than the chain. Um, like the chain has the very, uh, um, they have the evenly spaced little balls on your chain. Uh, it's a very, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, um, oh, geez, I'm totally going blank. <laughs> but it's a very distinctive pattern. But the, the string kind of varies and changes. Um, and I quite like the string. It's a little more subtle, but it's a beautiful look. And there, I think the string has a little, um, you have a little more flexibility with what you can do with the string. 
Um, but the chain is really fun too. I'll show you techniques for using both. See, again, we're getting kind of into membership stuff, but I have different ways of pulling the string through the paint. There's not just one way. I've probably got about five different um, string moves, string shape moves that I'll teach you inside the membership. Um, and it's really fun. There's a lot of different ways to pull the string and the, and the chain through the paint uh, to create different kind of effects and shapes and things like that. So good question. And, uh, and Jay's got a great, uh, a great uh, um, comment. She says she's used the Mardi Gras beads from the Dollar Tree, kind of big, but uh, cheaper. Um, yeah, you could use a variety of different sizes, especially if you're working larger. Uh, you can get a lot of variety of shapes and uh, textures and um, patterns if you use a variety of things. And you could use the string and the chain together. If you wanted to, you get a different look. And um, I, th I think that's, it's always great to have a variety of shapes and uh, edges and patterns in your paintings. It makes them much more unique uh, than having just the one thing all the time. But the string pull, I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, it is a, it is a tricky technique just because you're, we're manipulating something. It's kind of like drawing. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice um, or it's kind of like the, the Dutch pour, the, the, air, the air dryer or the, the hair dryer, you know, blowout pours. We're using a device to manipulate the paint. Anytime you do that, uh, it takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of, um, a little bit of uh, uh, practice with that. But uh, I think you'll get the hang of it quite quickly. And uh, JC is saying string is more bland, right? I wouldn't say bland. Um, I find them very exciting and interesting. Um, it's all in your, you know, your perception of the paintings. So, and it all depends on what kind of colors you're using. Um, there's a lot that goes into it aside from just the string. So keep an open mind about the string and the uh, chains. All right. So I think I'm going to stop talking about the string pole and the chain pole um, because we're going to be uh, taking a, a look at that next week. And that's really a members only thing. Um, okay, so let's see here. Now I do have a couple uh, last minute submissions. I didn't have time to type them up. Um, but uh, actually before I do that, I'm gonna just take you in, uh, those who are still here. And hopefully all of you are still here. I'm gonna take you in and show you a very quick sneak peek inside of our um, Facebook group. And so I'm gonna share my screen here really quickly. And I'm just gonna go in there really fast um, just to show you kind of what we do inside there. And uh, where is it? There we go, okay. Here we go, so let me switch this. So here it is, this is our uh, members only uh, Facebook group, The Pouring Studio. And I'm just gonna scroll down here quick. And I just wanna, Veronica just posted this. Veronica is a new member. And I was really um, amazed and thrilled that she posted this. Veronica has a painting here that she just posted. It's gorgeous, I love it. And she said, my very first painting in flip cup following the mini course. And this is the foolproof pouring mini course inside the membership. And this is her, these are her results for her very first painting ever. They're amazing, I love it. And I was so um, thrilled that you would share this inside our group. Um, so that is what you can expect. Well, that's what can happen. I wouldn't expect it, but that's what can happen when you just follow a proven uh, system. Uh, you get everything, you, you do everything one way, a certain way, follow the instructions. You can get amazing results right out of the gate. Um, I'm not gonna say it's gonna happen, um, but it definitely can happen. Veronica is proof of that. I love it. And uh, I just wanted to share that quickly. And we've got a bunch of other uh, uh, members in here. Carla, this is, Carla's great at the Dutch pour. Um, she did this a beautiful blowout. She dropped her paper towels in the middle of the painting and uh, pulled it out. It's still gorgeous. I don't know where the paper towels hit, but um, look at that. I mean, that's fantastic. So. We have lots of fun paintings. Here's one from Chris that I absolutely love. 
Um, this is Chris from one of our members from Australia. This is a, a gorgeous three cup, uh, three flip cup pour, I believe. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. I just love it. So our members are getting great results. Um, here's one from Carla, another one from Carla. It's great. And here's another one from Chris, which I love. This is a, uh, uh, cloud pour. So here's me. Wow. I don't want to look at that. So uh, here's one from a bunch of them from Susan, who is um, just going crazy with uh, her, her pouring techniques. Um, she tries everything out right away. She gets really good results. If she doesn't get good results, she keeps going. She keeps trying, keeps testing, but she's uh, really progressing really, really fast. And uh, I'd love um, I love her painting. She posts all the time. She created her own Facebook page uh, to focus on her painting. So it's it's fantastic. She's um, really going at it. And uh, here's one from me. This is the demo we did last week. This is what it looks like when you use the glue uh, pouring medium and uh, just simple craft paints and the uh, uh, silicone cells or the, the hair, the coconut oil hair serum. So that's a really quick look just inside the pouring studio. Uh, I'm not gonna linger in here, but I just wanted to point that out, especially, um, I'll go back up here and show this again. I think it's so great um, and so timely also. So thanks so much for that, Veronica, this gorgeous painting. Her, Veronica's first painting, I think it's amazing. So I'm gonna stop sharing that now and come back. So it's, um, I'm thrilled that the members are um, willing to share their paintings and experiences inside the um, our Facebook group. It's really, really wonderful, and um, and they're they're really, really progressing uh, very quickly, and they're getting uh, really good. I mean, incredibly good. So I'm so impressed with them and I'm so proud of them because um, they're sticking with it. They're doing it, um, and it doesn't always work. Not everyone works out, but that's that's what's to be expected with art. And, um, you know, not every painting is going to work out great. Uh, it's a learning process, no matter what. The, the moment you stop learning, you know, forget it. It's over. There's no point anymore, really. And uh, same with success. If you've got immediate success, if, your pers if every painting you did is absolutely perfect, um, what's the point in continuing? Um, you're not going to go anywhere because it's you've already reached the pinnacle. So is it even really worth it? Will you even value it um, unless there's some place to go? You know, unless there's room for growth, room for progress, uh, room for improvement. Uh, if unless there are those things, you're going to get pretty sick of it really quick, and uh, it won't be any fun. Because when is the last time you got instant perfect results and uh, thought it was a big deal or were really proud of yourself for doing it? Probably never, you know. So uh, that's the whole point: is getting better, progressing, uh, growing, and then um, you know sharing that with your fellow members. It's it's a great great thing. So all right. Um, so that is uh, the Facebook group. If you want to join it uh, and become a member, you don't have to. Of course, uh, it is optional, but uh, it is a very fun group to be in. So, okay, so I'm not seeing any other questions. Uh, if you have any last minute questions, we're getting uh, kind of closing out to the end of our Q&A. But, um, so, and then see, I've got so many members on here right now. So, and like Carla just, now she says every week I learn something new, which is great, you know, there's always something new to learn. Absolutely. I'm always learning something new too. So uh, there's always room to learn. You're never going to stop unless you choose to. And that's a shame. So, all right. Cool. All right. So uh, once again, I'm going to just grab the uh, link here and put it in the... Uh, comments one more time. So we're coming to the end of our extravaganza. Tomorrow is our Friday demo. And uh, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a, like a two hour demo. So I'll probably be doing two paintings. And uh, I'm not sure I'm not gonna I'll keep it a secret for now. 
but probably one of them is a pretty good bet. It'll be a, a funnel pour since that's what we're, we're doing this week. And uh, Donna is, is saying, um, and oh, I need to, I absolutely have to remember to uh, use some uh, pigments in there. I better write, make a note. So I'll use a couple pigments in one of our demos. And uh, Don is asking if I've used interference paints. And um, I've tried them and I haven't really, um, they're fun. Like I've used more than the regular interference that you would get in a, like the Amsterdam makes a lot of interference colors. And those are very uh, clear looking. It looks like almost like, a, like an iridescent whitish paint, but it's got this, um, color shift in there. Um, and those are a little trickier to use. You don't see a ton of effects. If you get like the folk art ones, and we've messed around with those quite a bit. It's like a color shift paint. Those have um, like a, more, a little more of an effect I, I find in our acrylic pouring. Um, the interference are really designed to go on top, like as a kind of a top layer or one, or a, one of the top layers uh, and affects the things underneath them. So we might take a look at uh, other ways to use interference paints other than mixing them in our cups, but um, they might really, really work great. I haven't really tried this um, with our, with the blowout, the blowout pores, Dutch pores, because they're kind of floating on the surface a little bit more than kind of um, sinking in the cup of paint. But, um, but uh, they're fun to use. Yeah. There's, there's so many different types of paint and, additives and things to use, but, um, yeah, they're kind of fun. So, all right. So yes. So Friday, um, and, uh, JC just said, uh, aren't interference paints like color shift? Yeah. They're very similar. Um, like color shift paints, uh, like the folk as a deco art or folk art. One of them makes the color shift paints. They have more of a pigment in them. Whereas true interference paints have very, little pigment, but more of the color shift. So they're very, very similar. And, and they kind of do the same type of thing. So, all right. And um, so let's see, and Irma has one more question. Can you add resin mica powder to the paint pouring? Uh, yes, you can. And it's not necessarily resin mica powder, but um, there are plenty of pigments or mica powders that you can buy and they're widely used in resin, um, but you can, also, you can also use them in acrylic pouring as well. I'll demonstrate that a little bit tomorrow and I'll use a couple different pigments uh, in one of our demos tomorrow. But uh, there's many ways to use them. They're very, very popular with the bloom technique, uh, using pigments with the blooms, but you can pretty much use them in any technique you want. So, but there's no resin in there. It's um, it's uh, just the pigments mixed with like acrylic binders and acrylic paint and things like that. All right. Okay, and so I'm gonna put the link to uh, sign up for the pouring studio in the chat one more time, and hopefully you could join me tomorrow for our our our, our big old demo. Um, it's gonna start at three o'clock. Uh, PM Pacific, six o'clock Eastern, and uh, probably run for about two hours or so. Um, so it'll be a whole lot of fun. I'll probably do two, two demos for sure. And we'll see if we can squeeze a third in. I don't know. Um, it's a long week. So, but uh, it'll be a whole lot of fun tomorrow. And then uh, Saturday, remember, um, after Saturday, the doors to the membership are closed. And uh, you're going to miss out on the, all those amazing bonuses, plus all of our, our amazing uh, monthly membership content. So I hope you will consider it. And the links are in the chat. Um, I'll probably talk about it a little bit more tomorrow. And, uh, and then Saturday, we'll meet again for one final time, kind of close out the extravaganza, this, this um, kind of mini you know, uh, membership experience. And uh, maybe I'll do something... Uh, a little special. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, thanks so much for joining me, anybody, everybody. Um, and uh, and uh, Sharon is asking about gel medium. Um, uh, what kind of gel medium do you use with mica powders? 
Uh, you can use, there's many you can use. We've discussed that. But uh, if you just want to use mica or just use the pigments by themselves in a acrylic pour, I recommend uh, golden soft gel, uh, like gloss, golden, what do they call that? Golden soft gloss gel, acrylic gel. That's probably what I would use because it has a little bit of body. We need to, we need to add some body to our, um, our pigments and that's what I would do. And so, all right. So, so Carla's saying, I feel like I need a bottle of champagne for Saturday. Oh my gosh. Uh, I think I need just a nap for Saturday, but uh, it'll be a whole lot of fun. So thanks so much for joining me, everybody. Um, I will see you tomorrow. Have a great evening and uh, uh, I'll talk to you again very soon. Thanks for the great questions, by the way. And uh, 